Swiftmeisters, we're going to learn even more techniques for improving the quality of the user experience and getting our apps to behave as you'd expect. We'll learn to change the return key on the iOS keyboard. Specifically, we'll set it to a done key and we'll use this to confirm that we're done with text entry. We'll learn to disable the return key if the text field is empty. We'll learn about the first responder, when the keyboard shows, and how to resign first responder and hide the keyboard. We'll learn some events for UI text fields, and we'll create IV actions that are triggered by typing. We'll use the primary action trigger that fires when the return key is pressed, and we'll use editing changed, which fires when anything in the text field changes. We'll use the isEmpty property on strings, the not operator, and we'll learn to programmatically enable and disable UI objects. Time for big learning! Giddy up! In this video, we're going to learn to make a few tweaks to our user interface to improve the look and feel and behavior of our Word Garden app. The first involves just a simple attribute setting. Right now, if you type into the text field, the output is all in lowercase. And since lowercase and uppercase letters are not equal, we want to ensure that everything typed in by the user is uppercase. Making this change is easy. We can return to the storyboard with our text field selected. We see that there are a bunch of text input traits in the attributes inspector. One is labeled capitalization. It's likely set to none by default. Pull down the menu and select all characters and your app will default to having the shift key locked when it runs. Now it is possible to click to turn off the caps lock, but we'll be learning a technique in a later video where we can programmatically force anything typed to be capitalized. Next, what we wanna do is we wanna set the return key on the keyboard to read done. We also want to disable the done key when there's nothing in the text field. This is because the user shouldn't be able to click done to submit a guess unless there's actually a guess letter in the text field. And just to show you, if I type a letter into the app and then backspace so that there's nothing in my text field, my return button down below is still active. Let's disable it if the field's empty. Now, both of these are also accomplished using attribute settings for our text field. There's a pull down menu for return key that we can set. All the options that you see here are replacement names for the word return. And the setting below that auto enable return key disables the return key if there's nothing in the text field. So this is super easy, no coding. Back to the main storyboard. We still have our text field selected. We'll click to make sure auto enable return key is selected. Now we can't press return if there's nothing in the text field. And we'll pull down this return key menu and select done. Let's build and run and see how things look. A couple of things to notice. We'll click in the text field for the keyboard to show up. Again, if yours isn't, you can always do a Command K. And as opposed to what we showed before, we can see the cap lock is down on the keyboard and all the uppercase letters are showing. So all capitals are gonna be what the user types by default. Now we also see in the lower right hand corner, the return key is now called done. We also see that it's disabled. Let's go up here and type an I. We see an I goes in and ho, oh, the done button is enabled. Let's backspace. Nothing's in the field. Done is disabled. Type a letter. Enabled. Backspace. Disabled. You can do this again. Works great. Next up, if the user presses done or presses the guess a letter button, we want to dismiss the keyboard so that the user can see what's happening with the flower in the background. And right now our app doesn't dismiss the keyboard. Well, we already have an IB action for guess letter pressed. So all we need to do is learn how to dismiss the keyboard and we can put the command in that action. Now, can we create an IB action also that will fire whenever the user presses the done button? We can. Pressing of the return key, which is now called the done button in our app, is referred to as the primary action for a text field. Now, I wish it had a friendlier name, maybe return key pressed instead of primary action, but we'll work with it. So in order to set up an IB action associated with pressing the return key, we'll control drag from our text field We'll create an IB action just like we've done with buttons. We can call it whatever we want. We'll call it done key pressed. We'll make sure that the event is primary action triggered. That's the pressing of the return key. And in both of these two IB actions, the one for the button and the one for the text field, we're going to call a method on the text field called resign first responder. Again, unfamiliar term, but here's what we need to know. When you click on the text field, it becomes what iOS calls the first responder. That also makes the keyboard appear. That means any events from the app, which typically are keyboard taps in the case of a text field, will go to the text field first so that the text field can respond to it. Now, if we want to get rid of the keyboard, all we have to do is call resign first responder on whatever is the current responder. We've only got one text field, so that's the only one you can type into. Easy. Text field is clicked. It becomes the first responder automatically. The keyboard shows. 
if we want to get rid of the keyboard, we simply call the resign first responder method. And we can do that in either of these actions. Let's give this a try. So back in Xcode, I'm going to click on viewcontroller.swift. And again, we already have an IB action set up for our button, this guess letter button pressed action. So we can go down here and we can actually type in guest letter text field. And if we press a dot, dot notation shows all the methods that are available. If we start to type in resign, we see sure enough, there is a resign first responder method. See the little M? It actually returns a bool, true or false. We're not really worried about what it's gonna return, but look what it says down below. It just notifies the object that it has been asked to relinquish the status as first responder in the window. That's not the easiest description for a new programmer to understand. Just know if the keyboard is showing and you've clicked in a text field and that text field is currently considered the first responder, the keyboard will go away. Now, just above this, I'm gonna give myself a little bit of space because I'm gonna create another action for our text field. So we're in viewcontroller.swift. To get into assistant editor mode, we option click on main storyboard. We've got our two files side by side. I can click and drag right from my text field here, but I'm gonna choose it in the document outline. And again, if things are nested inside of stack views, sometimes it's a little bit easier to know that you're definitely clicking on what you want if you drag it from the document outline instead of control clicking from the interface builder canvas. So when I control drag over, I'm gonna let go in this white space. My IB action dialog box pops up. For my event, I'm gonna select primary action triggered. Again, that's when the return key is pressed. I'm gonna make sure that the type is set as UI text field. And we're just going to name this IB action done key pressed. We see that the little stub of the function is added there. I don't need my main storyboard, so I can click on this X. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight my guest letter text field resign first responder line that I just typed, copy it, and paste it into the function above. Then let's build and run. Now let's click in the text field. iOS automatically sets the text field as the first responder. The keyboard shows up. Now let's see what happens when we click on the guess a letter button. That calls the IB action guess letter button pressed. Remember inside that we called resign first responder on guess letter text field. That dismisses the keyboard. We can now see our flower. Nice. Click back in the text field. It's automatically set as the first responder by iOS. The keyboard shows up. What happens if we type a letter and press done? And ho, oh, the keyboard goes away. We resigned first responder. That's because we created this other IB action, done key pressed, and called resign first responder on guest letter text field in there as well. Nice. Now we also want to clear the guest letter text field after each guest. That means after we press the guest the letter button or the done key, after you've guessed a letter, the letter still shouldn't be hanging out inside of the text field. We can quickly demo this in the app. Yeah, that's not good. That's not what we want. So this should be pretty easy to solve. We want to make sure once you guess a letter or press done that we put an empty string in as the text attribute for the guess letter text field. Let's do this as a challenge. Here's your challenge. Modify Word Garden so that if the guess a letter button is pressed or the done key on the keyboard is pressed, the text attribute of guessed letter text field is set to an empty string. Also, since we'll then have the same code in the IB actions for both the text field and the button, refactor your code by writing a separate function named update UI after guess, put the repeated code in that function, and then call this function from both done key pressed and guess letter button pressed. You should know how to do this. Pause. Give it a shot. Resume. Let's see how you did. Now to clear out the text property, all we need to do is say guest letter text field dot text. We can put an exclamation point in here because this is an optional, but we actually don't need that. If we did have an issue with the optionals, Xcode would remind us and offer a fix. Then we'll say this equals empty string, just double quote, double quote with nothing inside. Then let's highlight these two lines of code and cut them out with a command X. Again, I could put these same two lines of code up in done key pressed, but remember DRY, don't repeat yourself. I'm gonna give these lines of code a new home in this function that I'm gonna write below view did load. I'll say func update UI after guess, open and close parens, passing in no values into that function, open and close curlies, paste in the two lines that I just copied. Then I want to call this function I just wrote inside of done key pressed and delete resign first responder because that's in my new function. Replace that with a call to update UI after guess. I'll copy this function call from done key pressed and paste it into guess letter button pressed. There's our answer. Just one more thing we want to do in this video. We want to disable the guess this letter button when there is nothing in the text field. And here's how we can do that. 
we're going to create yet another IB action from our text field. And we're going to call this one guest letter field changed because this time we're going to have a different event that we're using. Instead of selecting the event as primary action triggered, which was pressing the return key, we're going to set the event as editing changed. That means this function is going to fire anytime the user makes a change to the text field, types a letter, deletes a letter, paste something in, cuts characters out of the text field. All of those things will make this function fire. Now, what are we going to do inside the function? Well, each time the field is changed, we call a guest letter field changed. Now, I could have put all this code on one line, but hopefully this is a little bit easier to read. This is what we're going to do. First, we're going to get the contents of the text property of guest letter text field, and we'll put that in a constant called text. And what we want to know is, is text empty or not? Now we could take a look at text.count, and if it was equal to zero, we know we've got nothing in there. But all string values also have this handy property called isEmpty. IsEmpty is a bool. If IsEmpty is true, that means there's an empty string in this string. If IsEmpty is false, that means there's something in the string other than the empty string. So if text.isEmpty is true, there's nothing in it, what are we going to do? We want to disable the guest letter button. There's nothing in the field, you shouldn't be able to click on the button to make a guess. Now buttons don't have an is disabled property, but they do have an is enabled property. So we want to set the is enabled property to the opposite of the text.isEmpty property. And how do we get the opposite of a bool value? We use the not operator. That's the exclamation point in front of the bool value. It turns what's false to true and what's true to false. So this line here says, look to see if text is empty. If it's false that it's empty, then that button should be enabled because you can make a guess. But if it's true that it's empty, let's get the opposite. Set is enabled to false. That's because you should not be able to click on the guess button if there's nothing in that text field. Now you might look at this and wonder, hey, couldn't I just have written this with an if else clause? You could have, but that would have been five lines of code. This one here, where we take the opposite of text.isEmpty, that's just one line of code. And you'll see programmers use this technique. It's an easy way to toggle false to true and true to false. So we want to use this technique. Let's code this. So to create a new IB action, we want to get into assistant editor mode, click on viewcontroller.swift, then option click on main storyboard. The action is from our text field, so I'm going to control drag from my text field. I'll put this action just above the done key pressed, which is also an action on a text field. I'll set the type to UI text field. Then for the event, what you want to select is editing changed. Again, editing changed is the one that's going to fire any time a character is changed inside that text field. We'll call this guest letter field changed. Click connect. I can close up my main storyboard. And now just to make this easier to read, we're going to create a constant. So right here in our new guest letter field changed IB action, we'll say let text equals guest letter text field dot text exclamation point. Now we could directly call is empty after guest letter text field dot text exclamation point, but that's a little wordy. So sometimes to make your code easier to read, it helps to create a local constant like this. Now there are several ways we could test to see if we have an empty string inside of text. And you already know two of these techniques. We could have checked to see if text was equal to the empty string. We're not going to do that. We could have checked to see if text.count was equal to zero. We're not going to do that either. Let's first take a look at what we want to change. That's going to be the guest letter button dot. And I'll start to type is enabled. We see sure enough it shows up here. In code completion, it says it's a Boolean value indicating whether or not the control is enabled. And it says control because this property doesn't just apply to buttons. It can apply to other user interface controls too. Now we'll set this equal to text. That's the constant we created above dot. And as I start to type in is, here we see is empty. We see it's a bool, a Boolean value indicating whether the collection is empty. That's exactly what we want. So press return to accept it. But we don't want to set guest letter button is enabled to whatever text.isEmpty is. We want to set it to the opposite of what text.isEmpty is. So if text.isEmpty is false, we want to set is enabled to true. If it's true, we want to set is enabled to false. How do we do that? Well, we'll surround this with parentheses, put an exclamation point in the beginning. That's the not operator. Not operator sets true to false and false to true. That's some efficient looking code, Swifter. Let's build and run and see how this looks. And we're going to have one other issue that we need to address here too. I don't know if you've noticed this, but we've got guess a letter already enabled. And by default, when we first load our app, the guess a letter button should be disabled. How come? Because we got nothing inside the text field. Let's click inside that text field. 
It becomes first responder, keyboard shows. Type an A, so the button was enabled. We set it to enabled again. Now backspace. Ah, look at that. Our new IB action guest letter field changed fires. That function gets the contents of a text attribute inside of the text field. Check to see if it's empty. Is it empty? Yes, that's true. So we take the opposite of true, which is false, and we set guest letter button dot is enabled to false. Perfect. Type another letter, just what we expected. Text dot is empty is false. We get the opposite of it, which is true. We set is enabled for the button to true. You can try that again. Working great, super splendid. And one of the things we can do to set our guest letter button so that it's either enabled or disabled properly is we can call the same enable disable code right from within view did load. So back in viewcontroller.swift, I'm gonna go to view did load. I'm gonna get rid of this comment here. We don't need that, I'll backspace over it. And I'll highlight these two lines from my new guest letter fields changed function, copy them with a command C, paste them into view did load with a command V. Now when my app runs for the first time, it's gonna take a look at what's inside of guest letter text field. It'll find that it's empty. Since it's true that it's empty, it'll take the opposite of true that's false. It'll set guest letter button dot is enabled to false. Did we have to check guest letter text field dot text? Couldn't we have just gone and set guest letter button dot is enabled to false? We could have, but maybe some point in the future what we want to do is go out and visit the dictionary site on the internet, grab the word of the day, and use that as our word to guess. So checking the contents of the text field is never going to be wrong. We also could have disabled this button right on the storyboard, but you're a code monster. We've done this in code. Let's build and run and see how things look. Look at this. We launch our app. Our guess a letter button is disabled right from the start, just as we wanted. Click in the text field. It becomes first responder. The keyboard pops up type a letter. We check to see if the text property in that field is empty. It is not empty, so we enable the guess a letter button. Backspace again. We disable the guess a letter button. Press a letter again. This time, let's click on the guess a letter button. We resign first responder. The keyboard goes away. We clear out the text property in our text field. Click in that text field again. iOS sets us to first responder. Keyboard shows. Type another letter. Now click on the done keyboard button. Resign first responder. We clear out the text field. And Swifter, just before we finish, I notice there's one more thing that we've got to deal with. If we return to the app, click in the text field, type a letter, then click the guess a letter button. Our text field's text property clears out properly. But our guess a letter button is still enabled. That should not be the case. You should not have an enabled guess a letter button when there's nothing in the text field to guess. How do we fix this? Super easy. Let's get back to our code. We can do that. Write an update UI after guess. Every time we guess, we're going to clear out the field. If the field is cleared out, then our guess letter button should be disabled. And the way we can do that is right before the end of this function, we can write guess letter button dot is enabled equals false. Now build and run. Here's our app. Fresh as a daisy. Click in that text field. It becomes first responder. We see the keyboard. Type a letter, button becomes enabled, backspace, disabled, type, enabled again. But now we click guess a letter and ho ho, sweet Johnny Ive, will you look at that? Resign first responder, the keyboard is hidden and the button is disabled. Swifter, you're mastering user interfaces in iOS. Hope you're feeling good about your skills. More big learning is still to come. Keep at it.